actually think that her real social sense was activated in the Depression, both at a time when her portrait business had pretty much dried up. She had, in the 20s, uh, been a successful upper middle class and upper class portraitist, bohemian portraitist, using the camera in San Francisco. Um, and, but uh, in the 30s, suddenly there are lots of homeless people gathered outside her studio window. A first very important picture she makes when she probably has nothing to do, she has no clients, is to look outside and see a bread line, a soup line forming. And uh, she goes outside or really only partway down the stairs. She's still very nervous really about going into the street and being a woman with a camera in the midst of something that many people feared would become a mob. So she only goes partway down the stairs, but looks directly at one man who's both part of the crowd and turned away while waiting for his ration of bread and soup. Um, and she called it White Angel Breadline. The need to overcome paralyzing fear at a time when people really were paralyzed by fear of what is happening to our country as the stock market had crashed and unemployment just rose and people were in the street, businessmen selling apples for five cents, just struggling to just survive, to subsist. But ultimately her skills intuitively, also trained in the portrait business, is to focus on the individual. And um, I think her pictures live in a way that few other depression photographs do because she is able to really figure out how to relate as one person to another in the photographic transaction in a way that makes these people live as people and not just as anonymous numbers or statistics. In Lang's case, and actually in the case of the practice of the FSA, it was to find out a name, an individual history for each person encountered and thought worthy of being documented in this study of social problems in the United States. And so I was struck again by this idea of we need to think about these as all of these people as individuals with their own individual histories, which have actually a great deal of commonality, but we still need to think of themselves as we think of ourselves as individuals. And this, I think, is the real power of Lang's photographs, then and today. Well, with my lecture, I hope to walk away with a new sense of the complexity of Lang and Migrant Mother. But in terms of opening them up to the exhibition, what I really hope people begin to see in what is an excellent exhibition that's been really beautifully curated by the local curator um, is how much America has always had challenges and in these challenges there are huge changes in the country, in migration, um, even the idea of internal migration from one region to another, as is particularly pertinent here in terms of the migration of Oklahomans to the West, where Californians actually talked in 1935 and 36 as there began to be a surge of Oklahoma migrants. They talked of building a wall. And in fact, uh, California was enriched by this new migration, as it was also enriched by many other migrations from other countries, Mexico, Asia, etc. And, um, and so what we fear most may be ultimately our greatest source of enrichment and dynamism in our culture.